right, so listen, guys. Do you know how hard it is coming here to come into a place like this and talk to strangers about all the poor choices that, that we've made? Um, and the one thing I can guarantee you that all of you have in common with us is that the choices you're making now that aren't right, we think they're only going to affect you. Every one of us thought, it's my life, it's only going to affect me. But lo and behold, the effect that it has on everybody else that loves you or that you pretend to love will be greater than the effect it has on you. Give them a round of applause again, guys. So I, I do uh, this differently. Um, when you think of an assembly and you think of people coming in to speak to you, you think of all these old people <coughs> that are going to come in here and tell us this cornball stuff. I don't even want to, you know, I'm going to get through this the best way I can. But it's not that. It's not. It's absolutely not. Now, we come in for an hour of 90 minutes. We take 90 minutes out of your life. Uh, and a lot of times going through life, you're going to spend 90 minutes, two hours doing something. You'll be like, geez, I'll never get that back. That was horrible. But what we're telling you today, you can't get anywhere else. We've lived it, we've been through it. We live in the smallest state in the country where you can't talk to somebody for five minutes without knowing somebody that they know or their parents know you. I'm not here to tell you what not to do. I'm not gonna tell you not to smoke weed, although you shouldn't be. I'm not gonna tell you not to be. I am gonna tell you don't take a pill from your friend who doesn't know more than you who isn't a pharmacist. So when your friend says, hey, I got this pill for my boy. This is Molly, we're gonna be at the party. We're gonna be killing her. <laughs> you tell him, hey, Jack Ash, you're not a pharmacist. I, I don't, I'm not taking that. I'm all set with that. I'm not gonna give you a PG version. I refuse to come in here and sugarcoat, because I buried 12 kids this year. Two of them from, from vaping, and there was something inside the vape. One of them similar to that, where there was something in the weed. Unfortunately for you guys, you're growing up in an era where the things that were considered harmless when we were kids are no longer harmless. I refuse to come up here and give you a PG version. My name's Alex Snow. I grew up in Cranston. I went to Cranston East. Every Thanksgiving, I used to play on this field out here. I probably scored 15 touchdowns out there. I almost came to this school for the vocational, but I, it would have been the ultimate betrayal to come and play for the Falcons when he was done. <laughs> so I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Although I know it probably would have been better for me. Life, my life might have turned out different. Went to Parkview, seventh and eighth grade, Sixth and seventh grade, eighth grade, I got kicked out of Parkview, so I had to go to Bain. They accepted me. So I'm really connected to this school, the Cranston school system. I grew up in Cranston, played football, was an average student, and I really believed in my heart that I loved my mother. If I didn't love anything else, I loved her. But fate and my choices proved me wrong on that. I can prove a lot of you wrong. Where you think you love your mother, I, I, I beg to differ, I say you care about her. Because when you love somebody, they're a part of every decision you make. Who in here has ever had, I'm gonna ask you guys questions. Keep it a buck with me, please. Because at the end of the day, like I said, you may never see me again. You'll never get this opportunity again. To talk to the, the real bad guy. Who in here has heard their parents say, I don't like that friend you have. I don't like him or her, she's no good. We were those kids, we were those kids. We didn't start out as those kids, but we turned into those kids. Who in here has ever made a choice for a friend, did something for a friend that they knew they shouldn't do, but they did it anyway? Loyalty, okay? Who in here made that choice and then their friend dubbed them and it was like, damn, I'm a sucker for doing that. I can't believe, like, I did that for you and this is how you're gonna treat me. Who's, done, who's had that happen to him? Yeah. I should be teachers and everything. Who wants to be successful? Okay. 
who loves their parents or whoever takes care of them. One thing about me, I love the truth. If you don't, you don't. Who wants to be successful in things? Who wants to go to college? Okay. Who's a senior? Okay. Who's a freshman? Who's a freshman? Who is the kid in here whose mother carried them for nine months in her stomach? Everything you ate, she ate. Every time you moved, she felt it. Okay. Okay. Who's the kid whose mother did all of that, and then when you when she you was brought in this world, she held you up and said, "I can't wait till you all did." Nobody. I can't wait till you grew up and become an addict. I can't wait till you grow up and throw your life away. That kid does not exist. At this age, from ninth grade to 12th grade, you're, you're cultivating two sets of friends that you'll need. The ones that you'll need to text back and forth in the workplace with, culinary, culinary school. The ones that you'll need to text back and forth in college with, and then there's the friends that you'll need in prison. Because at these tables, if there's four people, one in four will have contact with the police and end up in prison. One in four will overdose. Statistics they were telling you about. It's just a fact. It's just a fact. So if it's that, you four at that table, which one of you is gonna end up in prison? Well, I kind of got an idea, but. <laughs> Which one's going to be the one to o o overdose? That's the way you have to look at it. And you have to be vi vigilant and protect yourself from that. So my name's Alex Snow. I graduated from Fort Choice to Fort Choice. You know, I grew up in a family with, with just my mom, five brothers, my little sister. And I used to say all the time about my father, who in here does not have their father's name? Great, you guys are very lucky to have mom and dad. I used to be so upset, like why, who has a kid and doesn't stick by it? Who has a kid and doesn't want to be a part of their life? And I was, I was upset about that. That was one of the driving things for a lot of my poor choices. I ended up in prison with a 35 year sentence. I did 17 years in prison. Most of my adult life was in prison because before that sentence, I did five years. So 22 years out of 50 years, your adulthood doesn't start until you're 18. It's been all in prison. I went to prison for second degree murder. I'm a red belt master in jiu-jitsu. Someone pulled a gun on me, we wrestled for the gun, the gun went off and killed another guy that was with the guy that pulled the gun on me. Which, shot, which sounds like self-defense. Seventeen years, who's 17 in here? Think about every birthday, every Christmas, every summer, every winter, every one of them of your life I, I spent behind bars. Four years of that 17 years was spent in segregation where you come out for an hour. It's called 23 and one. You come out for an hour, shackled like this, and they bring you out to a, a dog kennel, which is probably from, from Willie to me, right here. They put you inside, they take the cuffs and stuff off, and you get to walk back and forth like this for an hour. If there's a jacket, if you're lucky enough to get one and it's winter, you get it. You go to the shower, shackled and cuffed. They put you in the shower, which is a cage. They take the shackles off. They let you take your shower, put the shackles back on, back to your room. Four years of that. After a while, when you're in that cage with that isolation, the vents that you hear, they start to sound like somebody's talking to you. They start to sound like somebody's talking about you. And I bring this up, and I never really say this part of it, to say that, when I was out here running up and down this football field, there was a chance in hell you could have told me 
that I would be in prison for 17 years. I didn't wake up one day and say, today's the day I'm gonna kill somebody. It's a pattern. Just like you graduate from middle school to junior high school to high school, you graduate in a pattern the same way with your poor choices. Starts off smoking a little weed, starts first it starts off even more innocuous than that. It starts off with disrespecting the teacher. It starts off with being a distraction in class. Because you know, when you're in class and the teacher has to stop the class to talk to you all the time, you're victimizing the other students and their parents who bring them, send them to school to hear the teacher, not to hear the teacher talk about you. It's the smallest form of victimization, but it is victimization. Mr. Sasso, could you contact the main office, please? Mr. Sasso. It starts off with that. Then it starts off with bullying a little bit. Then it starts off with breaking into lockers and stealing other kids' money while they're in gym class. Then it turns into doing drugs, selling drugs. And now we're off to the races. Who wants to be successful again? Okay. Who wants to, uh, who loves their parents? Who wants to break their mother's heart? Because that's what my nightmare is about. I've been shot three times, all the prison time, but I don't wake up at three o'clock in the morning sweating and, and having a nightmare about that. I'm gonna tell you what my worst day in prison was. I'm gonna tell you how I broke my mother's heart. But before I do that, who loves their parents again? Who's ever been in a car with somebody that's been uh, texting and driving? Keep it, keep it a buck with you. Who's been in a car with somebody that smoked a little weed or had a drink? Be honest. Okay, you three. You, 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 come up here for a second. I'll take four of them. your courage for raising your hand and being honest, man. Because what I do is I put you on the spot. When you're down in Providence, going out, going to the club, going to the mall, going wherever, life's gonna put you on the spot too, you understand that? When someone wants your watch or your iPhone or whatever. You have to be courageous and you have to stand up to that moment, you understand? I appreciate your honesty. You love your mom? She's all right. She's all right? Yeah. I like mine, she's all right too. <laughs> love your mom? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. You been in a car with somebody that's been texting and driving before? Obviously, all, yeah, of course, all, that's how all, it is. All the time, okay. So I can prove to you that you don't really love her, that you care about her. Yeah. You too, right? Yeah. Okay, so you're driving. You're texting. You three are in the car. <coughs> he's texting and driving. He's not drunk. He's not high. He's not anything. He's texting and driving just against the law. You got your head down. You're going to a party. All the, all, the, all, the, all the girls you know, I'm here, you're you telling your boys, listen, we be here, you're saying, well, I'm dripped down, my swag's to the ceiling, you feel me? Just make sure you're there, yeah, yeah, you know what I mean? Make sure you're there, because this is gonna be special. You don't hear the fire truck come through the stop sign, you hit the fire truck. He gets ejected from the car and gets killed. You're texting and driving, he gets killed, you get a scratch and you're good. What happens next? has taught us to focus on criminal and crime, and, and never the victim. I asked you guys eight times if you loved your parent. You, you get thrown through a window and get killed, and you don't even mention your parents. They don't come into this equation? No, you think about him going to jail. He's texting and driving and kills his boy. He's supposed to go to jail. Just like the sun comes up every day, there's nothing special about that. He's going to jail. And guess what, partner? They don't turn nobody away. You're a handsome kid, but no matter how you know, they don't turn. And there was a guy in there who was a midget. They cut the pants off so they fit him. You understand? They don't turn anybody away from prison, right, Chris? Where is, yeah, they don't turn anybody away. Unless they have enough money, then they turn them away. No, absolutely not. Absolutely. The governor was in there. Yeah, that's true. 
Because they don't turn anybody away. So now here's the thing. You get killed and you don't even think of your parents, but you love them. Yeah. Here's what happens next, the important part. Them going to jail is not important. And this is what I do with the Institute for Nonviolence. This is what I do with the North Kingston Police. I'm an advocate and a mediator. When, when accidents like this happen, we go ring your mother's doorbell. This is what happens next. How old are you? <coughs> uh, what's your name? Uh, JD. Ring the doorbell. The man, there's been an accident with JD. That woman that you said you love, life as she knew it is over. If you've got little brothers and sisters, they're crying. Mommy, what's wrong? They don't know what's going on, but they can sense it. You understand me? Yeah. Then they take your mom down to identify you. But that's what happens next. That's what this program is about. Okay? Pull a sheet back and hold your beautiful face up and say, this your kid you raised for 17 years? You thought would be a lawyer, a doctor, anything other than the victim of his friend's choice? Texting and driving? Putting a drug in his body? Then your mother gets to go home and see your room the way you left it. Laying in your bed, holding your pillow, crying for the smell of you just to be next to you, saying, why my kid? You understand that? Yeah. That's what happens next, bro. Okay? Then everybody in here, close your eyes and picture the person that loves you the most, standing at a podium, trying to tell somebody how special you were. How much they loved you, who they thought you would be. This is the part that, as kids, you don't think about. Even some of us as adults don't think about. That's what happens next. When you love somebody, a part of every, you love your parents. Tell you, what's your name? Joe. Joe, put the text away, baby boy. Wait till we get to the party. You understand that? Yeah. You love your mother. When someone hands you a drug, you say, I'm not putting that in my body. You understand? That's the difference. You understand that? You understand that? Now, do you think that's loving your mother when you don't even think about her when you get killed? No. Okay. Does everybody understand that? I can't hear you guys. Yes. Thanks. Let me see you guys. Give them a hand, guys. I'm a nice guy today, but I, I haven't always been a nice guy. Please don't make me call you out. Who knows what a snitch is? Okay, hands down. Who in here, for whatever reason, if they saw someone with a gun in their locker in the school, you walk by, you see the gun in there, oh, look at this terror guy. And uh, who would not say anything, for whatever reason? Keep, keep it a buck with me. You, you know, retaliation, whatever, raise your hand up high. Yeah, be proud of your answer. Who wouldn't say anything? Okay. Cool. If you raise your hand too back there with the button. Okay. Come on up there. Come on up there. You too. Who else would not say anything? I challenge you to be courageous for whatever reason. This is how we learn. Back row. Back row. Come on up. If you got your hand up, come up. Who would not say anything? Yeah, I know you guys thought this was going to be me standing up here. Nah, I'm going right at you. Up here. Anybody else have the courage while I'm here to tell the truth? Who would not say anything? Who would say something? Okay. Come on up. Big boy with the hero jacket on. Come up here. Ha ha ha. Oh man. Pretty boy swag. Get up here. Who else would say something? Come on, big boy. By the way, ladies. This ain't what you want for a boyfriend right here. He, he is not gonna do right. This is what you want right here. <laughs> All right, who, who wouldn't say, who would say something? You would say something? Yeah, sure. Come down here, come this way. You would say something? Yeah. Who wouldn't say anything? You would say something? Okay, first of all, why would you not say anything? Give it a thought, keep it coming. There's no wrong answer, huh? I'm not okay, uh, okay. That's a new one. Okay. Why wouldn't you say anything? It's not my business. Okay. It's not a snitch. Okay. All right. So why would you say something? There's a gun. <laughs> <laughs> the most obvious reason. Why would you? Putting everybody at risk in school. Okay. I trust the people at the school negative three percent. Absolutely. So, confused kid who 
he's been bullied a little bit. He's awkward. Uh, doesn't really, you know, the girls ain't really feeling him, whatever. The gear's not right. They're bullying him. He doesn't understand that tomorrow nobody will care about any of that stuff. He doesn't understand that violence solves nothing. I've been violent my whole adult life, and it solves nothing. I've got revenge before. It's not as sweet as they say it is. Violence solves nothing. Okay? Who's seen a school shooting before on the person that did it? Anybody in this room has ever seen it after the aftermath on the news? A school shooting, and then they show the person that did it? Usually the person looks a little off, right? Confused. Let's say he has medication that his family can't afford. He hasn't been taking it. You saw the gun in the lockup. You didn't say nothing. I'm not a snitch. I'm not a uh, op. It's not my business. You go in the classroom 101. <coughs> your sister's in the class. You didn't kill anybody in that class. Your sister's in there. Your sister's in there. Your brother and your brother. Would you say something then? You can't stop them yourself. None of that. Confused kids going to classroom 101. Your brother's in there. Would you say something? Save his brother? Yeah, of course. Would you say something? Would you say something? Why is it that only your loved one counts? Show me the kid in this room that does not count. I started off by saying that. There's no kid whose mother carries him for nine months. And, and everything she gets, she goes through more pain than me getting shot, burnt with five gallons of grease in a riot in prison. Everything I've been through to bring you in this world. As men, we can't even understand that pain. To bring you in this world. They don't hold you up and say, I can't wait until you get killed by a confused kid. There is no kid like that. Please show me that kid, bro. Whose parent would be okay with that? This whole school would be devastated. Grief counselors, everything. It'll be your man. Chances are when you don't see something and say something or speak up. Cur cur strength, I'm 6'5", I'm 300 pounds. I bench 500 pounds, bro. Squat 700. You understand? I'm a, a red belt master in jiu-jitsu. Strength is not measured by how strong you are, what you can lift, whose ass you can kick. It's not measured by any of those things. It's measured by what you're able to stand up for and believe in. That's what it's measured by. And I've been the weakest dude my whole life because I've been a follower. And I'm official out there, bro. Check me out. Google me after this. You understand that? But I'm here to tell you that that does not make you a snitch or an atma. Check this out. You see him with the gun in the locker. You pick your phone up. You see the gun, you're like, oh, look at this jackass. This is not going to end good. Because today I'm robbing you of the excuse I didn't know what would happen. That's what we do in this program. We take that away from you. You pick the phone up. Kid with locker 240 got a gun in his locker. How many cops will be here? Every class of police, state police, and the FBI. Because us as adults and teachers and parents are tired of turning the news on and seeing you guys running for your life because nobody said nothing. Now, you say something and the kid comes to prison. And like I said, I'm a nice guy today, but in there I'm not a nice guy. Don't get it twisted. He's in my room and I tell him how lucky he is he didn't kill anybody at this school because I, I told you in the beginning that we all know somebody that knows somebody. Two of my nieces go to this school. And I tell them how lucky he is he didn't hurt them or any of the teachers here that I love and care about. How lucky he is he didn't throw his life away. How lucky he is he didn't destroy all these families. When he comes home and he sees you, he's going to do four years, three years instead of 50 years. What's he going to say to you? He's going to call you a snitch? What is he going to say? What's he going to say to them, the person that said something? He's going to say thank you. Because i got to tell you, not one of the times I was riding through Cranston and Providence with that gun in the car that I didn't wish somebody loved me enough to say something. And I didn't spend 17 years in there. Now, what is a snitch? That's a tattletale, man. That ain't, that's not. Here's what snitching is. Now, this I don't condone. You two are selling weed. You beat your girl up, okay? You, you put your hands on your girlfriend, which is not okay. It's one of my pet peeves, domestic violence. You put your hands on your girl. You don't want to go to jail for that, and you say, I'm not going to jail for hitting her uh, because she's Dan's niece, and he's going to get me. Uh, my man and me are selling drugs. Then they go get arrest him for that. 
is selling him out to save yourself. But that is a term that criminals came up with to justify their bullshit. And it's not, does not apply to you as a high school student. It does not apply to a weapon in this school, man. Drugs. So it doesn't apply to that. If you're a criminal and you're in the street and you're doing dirt, no, you don't have a right to sell your boy out to save yourself. I don't condone that. You know, you know what I'm saying? That's what a snitch is. That's what an op is, man. It does not apply to you as a student in this school. Now, you save 20 students and five teachers. You're a snitch? What is it? A hero. A hero, my man. And you will be on the Ellen Show getting a new car. You understand that? <laughs> you understand that? You'll be on the killer. <laughs> you guys got this all twisted. You are not an op. You are not a snitch. Do you understand that? Do you understand that? You understand that? You feel me? Yes. You should understand it. Give them a hand. Have them to do it. Be a free thinker. Think for yourself. Stop running with what you hear people say in rap songs and all this other stuff. Because it's, it's nonsense. It's an illusion, bro. They left a lot of shit out of that rap song, and I'm going to tell you about it right now. Have a seat. Give them a hand, guys. <laughs> I think my worst day in prison was, real quick. The first day. There's two days, the first day and every other day. It's all reps. I had $25,000 in my account, but guess what? I could only spend 60 like the guy that only had 60. <clears throat> so nobody's special, just like Jen said. Nobody's better than everybody. Everybody wears the same clothes. Anybody got any idea what my worst day was? February 26, 2006, they came to my cell and said, hey, tough guy, they want you down at our principal's office, which is ship command. Two weeks prior to that, my mother had seen me, came to visit me. That's what these, ta these tattoos are. The tables have names on them and numbers. G1 is the last, the last place I've seen her alive. She came and sat down. I walked in from the visit after they searched me. But before she sat down at the table, I was in a little camera room because of the job that I had where I could see. So my mom has a mess, my little sister's wheeling in, not my thug homeboys, none of that. My little 90 pound sister was bringing her in. My 90 pound sister brought her to put money in my account so I could have deodorant and all that other stuff. Wheeling her in, they made my mother stand up. She could barely stand, she's like this, my sister's trying to hold her up. They looked under her, made her take her shoes off, looked under her socks, looked in her mouth, checked her pockets. And they're supposed to do that because where I was is not based on my feelings for my mother. My choices should have been based on my feelings for my mother. It's based on custody and security. They're supposed to do it, and they did it. They dump her back in the chair. They're not doing it to her. I'm doing it to her. My sister wheels her into the table. I get searched before I come in. I come in, and like I said, we live in a small estate. Everybody knows everybody. All my friends who were in there that I was cultivating at this age, all the people my mother said were not okay as friends that I still hung with were the people that I needed in prison because that's what I was cultivating. When I walk in, their families are in there. Hey, Alex, bam, I'm stopping at every table. What up, baby boy? <laughs> what's good? What's good? What's good? I get to my table. My mother says, where the hell do you think you are? at the SB Awards because you had a scholarship to Ohio State to play football. Are you at a movie premiere? You're in the worst place in the state and you're the most popular person in hell. I did not raise you for this. I didn't bring you in this world for that. I said, Mom, and I'm all teared up. I was like, Mom, I'm sorry. She said, I said, I love you. She said, no, you didn't love me. You cared about me. That's where I got that from. She said, you loved yourself. From the age of 14, your choices have been based on what Alex wanted, not what I wanted. So don't stand here and pretend that you love me. They wheeled her out. Two weeks later, they came and knocked on my cell, said, tough guy, I want you on a shift command. All the way down there, even after this lady was here telling me how sick she was, I'm saying to myself, did they find my weapon? Because everybody has a weapon in prison. Did they see us playing poker last night? Are the state police here with a new charge? Because you really get away with nothing. Because when you're sleeping, they're working. You get away with nothing. I get down there and they say, hey, tough guy, the only person that gave a shit about you, no matter what you did, died. So strip. Your mother's dead and strip should never be in the same sentence. So here's my graduation present. 
from graduating from poor choice to poor choice to poor choice. This is the ultimate present. Nobody told me about that in the rap songs, man, and in the movies. They stripped me, put my clothes back on, shackled me like this, three vans, caravan to the funeral home. We get to the funeral home, they, they got automatic weapons, they got dogs, because nobody's gonna bust me out. Being a, a martial arts expert, they're gonna make sure I don't escape from this funeral home. <clears throat> so not only have my choices embarrassed my mother while she was alive, in her death I'm an embarrassment to her. There's all these state trooper cars out front. And the state troopers are like, who the hell's that? See, I used every excuse to fail. Our economic situation, I, my geography, the single parent. But I have a brother who lived with me, who really does exemplify strength, who never made a poor choice. And the state police are there for him because he's a corporal on the state police. That's what strength is really measured by. He really did love our mother. So I'm an embarrassment to him too in my mother's death. I walk to the casket, I can't even touch her hand, man. I can't kiss her goodbye. I'm afraid I'm gonna knock this casket over, man. I was there four minutes, they stuffed me back in the van, right back to prison, it was a Thursday. I didn't cry, I couldn't cry. Until four months later, it just came out on its own. That's my worst day in prison. That's my worst day in prison. But that's a couple of what you learned here today. And like I said, I love the truth. You can tell me that you didn't learn anything. Is the resource officer here? Because they don't need him if you tell me that. So let's tell you that right now. What'd you learn here today, big fella? I can't hear you, bro. Stand up for me. Be covered. Be courageous to this, man. Appreciate you. Bravo. Listen to your loved ones. Never think less of them. Let me, let me hear. I, I love your answer up there. What did you learn here today? Okay. Just give me something. And I know it'll be profound. That's why I asked you. No, there's expectations. Too. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's not all about you. Bravo. Here you go. Are you an athlete? My, that's my biggest theme. Don't let who you think is a friend. See, you're not going to let your enemy make a bad choice for you because you see that coming. What about when it's your cousin or your brother or your girl that you love so much, girl, we've been through it all. <laughs> I'm going to do this for you this time, but you better not dump me. And that's usually what happens. You understand? Go get it. Go get it. Last but not least, I'm gonna go back there to the thugs, where they at? Where they at? My man right there with the arms folded. Stand up for me. Let me hear it. What'd you learn, bro? I can't hear you. Let me slide this way, because I'm not even playing. <laughs> 